first I started playing the piano. I'm still a piano player. Yeah. Um, that led to me being, uh, also I'll be playing piano. I kept studying at the university. I graduated with a music major. When I played piano, that led me to becoming an arranger on certain groups and musical and, and albums, different records. And that led me to becoming a musical director on tours and on different albums and different arts. Which then in turn led me to becoming a producer. I mean, they pretty much took a stage. I mean, one thing led to the next pretty much by accident. I, I didn't really look to be a producer. I just wanted to play in a band and write some music. But it led me to becoming a producer by accident. And then later on, your juices just start flowing, and then you just want to be able to control a little more. You know? And, um... <laughs> Going back to uh, 1971, in a place on 52nd Street over here called Uchina, uh, we did a, a thing called uh, the Find Your All Stars, and I believe Mr. Larry Hall is around here and he's responsible. Give me a hand to Larry Hall. That was the night that uh, all this magic came together of all these great artists, and, and we took a shot and we did it at the Cheetos on Thursday night. It was a great feeling. And uh, my friend Jerry Masucci, my rest in peace, had the foresight to record and film this, this uh, show that we did for the Final All Star. And that was the explosion of the salsa music around the world, with this movie and this record and all these things started happening. And the group started traveling abroad to, to South America first, then we went to Japan, we went to Africa, we went to all over Europe. And the music kept spreading from this one production that was done called the Fucking All Stuff that had all these great artists put together in one package, you know, so it was great. And then it kept growing from there. And, and as the years went on, uh, all of these artists became big stars in their own rights, like Willie Colon and Ruben Blades and Celia Cruz and Pacheco and all. It goes on and on and on, you know, Hector Lavo, Chel Feliciano, Ivan Miranda, Ray Marreco. It just keeps going. And that's opened up the door to what's happening now. Uh, uh, the new things are bringing the young guys, the new producers like Sergio George, and the new company of artists that we have been able to put together at RMM. Uh, with, 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 uh, but maintaining a lot of the artists like Sergio Cruz and Tito Colombe. As the years went on, uh, all of these artists became big stars in their own rights, like Willie Colon, and Ruben Blades, and Celia Cruz, and Pacheco, and all. It goes on and on and on. You know, Hector Lavo, Chel Feliciano, Ivan Miranda, Ray Marreco. And it just keeps going. And that's opened up the door to what's happening now. Uh, uh, the new things are bringing the young guys, the new producers like Sergio George, and the new company of artists that we have been able to put together at RMM. Uh, with, 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 uh, but maintaining a lot of the Artists like Sergio Cruz and Tito Colombe are moving to the new industry that are not happening in India and getting new artists like the Jeremy Allen and Claude Black and Michael Stewart. And just keep going, you know. Uh, uh, the music is out there, the people love it. It's a happy music. And, uh, we have great artists, we have great arrangers like Sergio George, and you see the front there, a bunch of other guys around here to make the people jump and swing, you know, and it's a dancing music. And I've been to Germany where I see people, you know, jumping up and down. They don't understand, they don't understand the language. But they understand the rhythm, you know, and the rhythm is there. And you see the same thing in Japan. And you see it in, in all parts of the world that I've been to with this music. I've seen the people just take the music in and they get excited by it. And that's why it keeps growing, it keeps happening. You know, we have, every day we have new interpreters of this music, you know. So, uh, I see everything very, very good. I mean, shiny from my, from where I'm looking. You know, I see the, the music growing, the business is growing. Like the said before, the sales are growing. The people are buying more and more records every day. There's a, a lot more things happening with the whole Hispanic movement now. All this synergy is coming together, and I believe that it's going to be seen all over the world. You know, it's, it's and basically this music comes from a small part of the world. It's called the Caribbean between. 
Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Santo Domingo, and has created this whole massive thing in the world that you have to say that maybe the, the air and the sun and the sand is special in that part of the world. You know, but uh, I've been around for a few years now seeing this, and, and I see it growing, you know, and I, and I love it. So I can say that. Tiene una cantidad de fenómenos en todos sus países que alcanzan las más altas, altas cotas de calidad en relación al mundo anglo, en relación a cualquier continente. Es la calidad lo que nos hará grandes, es el mejorar la selección, es el invertir con generosidad lo que nos hará que el mundo este que ya está dando señal de ser muy poderoso todavía sea más grande. that needed to be done to, to create a, a stronger presence of Latin, a stronger Latin presence within the music industry by the year 2000, what would that be? Well, uh, well that opens a can of worms, but since I only have one thing, um, I think in order for our music to be really heard, it has to um, and I'm not talking about mom and pop stores or stores that only sell Latin music, when I walk into a Tower Records or an HMV or the Virgin Megastore, uh, it's unsettling to me to see that you know they have 100,000 square feet and this, the size of this table is the Latin section. And you find Julio Iglesias on the miscellaneous aisles and Mena mixed in. I mean, there's no real awareness at retail. Um, and they sell records because our people are really passionate about the music and will take the time to go look for it in the store. But, you know, when I look at, at that there's probably a few million Hispanics in New York and that's all they know about, um, this, the Latin section should actually be a lot bigger and not in the back of the store. And I think it's important um, for retail to understand that um, the Latin consumer has dollars and they're going to spend money uh, to buy these records. Uh, the only other thing is that um, in television, I believe there has to be more positive Hispanic role models on Anglo television. Uh, in prime time, there's yet to be uh, a television show that has an entire Hispanic cast uh, sort of representing our views and issues. Um, and I, I feel that's long overdue, and, you know, and it'll be an incredible opportunity for, for our people once that happens, and hopefully it'll happen in the foreseeable future. today on the cover of uh, Time Out magazine. But I, I think we better start educating ourselves a little bit too. Um, I think it's time that we take a look at our media, how the media works. I think it's time that our some of the executives, and I, I'm, I'm guilty as, as much as anyone else, uh, come off the, the, so the white tower roll in and, and hit the pavement, hit the streets. Uh, and, and I think we have to be more humble as a community, proud but humble, uh, in order to reach out to, to, to our kids. I think we have to focus on how to reach our kids. Uh, the assimilation, I believe, is a real issue uh, that we have to address. Uh, we're still a secondary market, and if we want to become a, a powerful market, even more powerful than we are today, we have to organize ourselves and have self-respect first, in my opinion. Thousand. Wow, that's in a couple of months. Uh, everybody had very interesting things to say, and I agree with uh, just about everything that was said here. I think the preparation is the, is the most important thing for any art form, you know, is you have to study. You have to educate yourself, you have to study, you know. If you're a conga player, then be a conga player that reads music. Just don't be a conga player. You know, there's schools for music. I think kids should get more involved in this music. Not only music, but voices and everything. You know, just if you have a talent to do something, I think you should try it even before you get to the studio, you know. I think when you get to the studio, you should be ready to go. And that's part of the preparation, maybe the surgeon is mentioning here. There's guys that come to, to, to you more prepared than others, you know. 
sometimes we get lucky and we find that pearl that, that, that comes not already most of these uh, acts you have to mold them and put them together and, you know teach them so many things and it's like a it's, it's a job you know to create a, a, a an artist nowadays it's, it's a hell of a job it's a, it's a big investment and and uh, the but the but the business is growing and, and i believe the preparation for the future is, is what's going to keep us alive here going into the new millennium you know i think that these kids really got to dig into this stuff and if you're into the music business or acting or whatever you want to direct whatever you want to do you have to go for it you have to go and study and educate yourself and try and be the best you can and give excel as much as you can. That's it.